Because, you know, I mean, the church that has been so, you know, incredibly strong around here, the Christian church, I, I feel, um, often has, has difficulties connecting with people because there aren't teachings. I gave a sermon in the Anasquan Village Church, and they gave me 15 minutes to talk. You can't, how are you going to teach people how to live their lives in 15 minutes every Sunday? And in Buddhism, there's a tradition of having a lama, having a teacher, who's your heart teacher, who you can call up. You say, this is going on, you know, how do I cope with this? And the idea in Buddhism is not to teach you how to cope, but how to teach, how to teach you how to end your suffering. The, the idea is that you can eliminate it to totally. Which, which, I mean, most people don't even know that. Yeah. I didn't know that. Huh? Is that what brought you, that was, that was part of what brought you in the beginning to it? Yeah. Yeah, really what drove me to it was that um, Rick Blue, my husband and I, who teach at the retreat, we were, we were in a situation that required um, a lot of ethical choices to be made. Very difficult situation, horrible situation. And um, we were at a gathering for um, Tibet when, uh, you know, the Dalai Lama and everyone were really pushing for people to help Tibet find its freedom and um, negotiate with the Chinese. And we went to this, to this gathering. And we were in this situation. I looked around the room at people in robes and all, and I thought, there are people in this room who know a lot more than I do about to handle something like this. I'm, I'm just going to get up and ask. So I went over to Howard Cutler, who wrote The Art of Happiness with the Dalai Lama, about Western psychiatry and how Buddhism deals with the same kinds of questions people have. And I sat down and I said, you know, you don't know me from Adam. We're having a family problem. We really need help. And not just legal help. We need spiritual help. Do you know anyone in this room who could help us? And he said, actually, I do. And he pointed to a man at our table, a man named uh, Lopsan Rakke, who had been a monk, and he'd been an assistant of the Dalai Lama. And he had come to this country. He was now the head of the, I don't know, it was a neuropsychology department, clinical psychology, something like this, at UCLA. So I went over to him, very humble man. And I said, you know, I have a problem. I'd love to come and talk to you. And he said, sure. He gave me his card. He said, call me tomorrow. And the next day, I felt really shy that I'd done that. I thought, this guy is, you know, head of this department. <laughs> I'm going to, you know, Dr. Rafke, I have this little problem. <laughs> you know, and, and my memory tells me that he called me, you know. And, and I was so impressed that he had not forgotten. Mm -hmm. And that was really my first lesson about Buddhism. Mm -hmm. doesn't matter how high a lama is. What they're interested in is, is you. They want to help you. So... Uh, I began to to create a friendship with Love Sang, and, and Rick did too. And eventually he said to me one day, and to Rick, you know there's this wonderful teacher in, in Venice, California, right near us, right near us, named Brian Smith. You might be interested in his classes. And Brian Smith ended up being Lama Guru. Wow. And um, over ten years later, here we are. Wow. How, how long has he been coming out uh, to, to the East Coast? I invited him to come uh, seven years ago. Uh, Ina Han, who runs the Wind Hover Performing Arts Center, was an old teacher of mine. I mean, excuse me, Ina, early teacher of mine. <laughs> Ina, Ina never gets old. The rest of us get old, not no, Ina. Yeah, good, good recovery. Right yeah, there. thank you. Thank you, oh my God. Um, she, I heard from a friend of mine that she might be thinking of selling some property at Wind Hover. It's hard to run Wind Hover, and she's now in her 80s, and um, I have loved her ever since I was young. She was a dance teacher of mine, and I got in a car, and I ran, you know, I raced to Ines, to Wind Hover, and I said, you know, is this true? And she said, well, you know, I, I don't know, but, you know, this is, this is, it's getting hard for me. And I said, what can I do to help? She said, I don't know. So I was driving home, and I thought, you know, this is this place, Cape Ann, is my is my soul. Mm -hmm. What could I bring here that I could bring to her place in the summer, and we could gather people around and create awareness about it? And um, I thought, 
thought, I, I, I want to bring Lama Move here. Mm. And so that summer I created the retreat. Seven years ago. History. Yeah, yeah. The rest <laughs> is history. Then hundreds of people began coming. We outgrew every building on the place. We had to rent a tent. I used to call him Llama Bob, you know, because we'd have this, you know, revival tent at winter. <laughs> nice. next, next year, the snakes. You know? <laughs> Fantastic. Oh man. Yeah, and finally, um, we we basically outgrew the place so much that we we moved to Governors, wow. with Ina's blessing. Ina's blessing. All right, well, people can find the, the information uh, about, about this. Right, they go to the summerretreat.com and. Uh, can be summerretreat.com. The summerretreat. There's two R's yep. in there next to, to each other. Summer the summerretreat.com. And we have, um, right now, you can do it in two payments. Mm -hmm. We charge $685. I'm totally committed to keeping the price right there. I added a day to the retreat this year. It's a six-day retreat, and I raised the price by only ten dollars. Wow. I know times are hard, yeah. and um, you know we bend over backwards to bring people there. We give half scholarships. All you have to do is apply for one. Mm -hmm. um, there's an email there, right on the retreat. You can email or phone Allison Landoni, and you can ask for a scholarship. You don't have to have any special qualifications. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So we hope people will come. It's 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 a life changing experience. I will I will say you know for my readers that, that you know who listen to this and other people that in what I have experienced the little tiny tiny bit that I've experienced everything that I've read everything that I've I've practiced in the little bit that I've practiced has has been so simple and true and I I credit a, a, a simple teaching by Barbara Keown in the big portion of what the blog has become and my life has become a, such a positive thing. So uh, I want to thank you guys Yay. for coming by and uh, hopefully one of these days I get to make it out there. You gotta come. I know, I know, I gotta come. Thanks guys. Thank you. You know, um, we turn to uh, church and we turn to self-help. We turn to a lot of self-help books and the problem with self-help is it doesn't work. That's why there are more self-help books every year, right? Yeah. This works. It's not something that Lord Buddha thought of to explain the world. Your actions have consequences, and it works. So the difference between this and self-help is that this teaches you how to help others and how to spend your life helping others, which Buddha said was the only source of happiness. And once you start to do it, you'll find out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like the what Barbara said, the the most selfish thing you can do is to give. Yeah. So if you're helping, you're giving, and you get it back in spades. Yeah. Absolutely right. Yeah, it's just true. Yeah, just true. Very <laughs> simple. Thanks, guys. <laughs>